have you ever heard of a freedom toaster? No, not that freedom toaster that burns Guy Fawkes mask into your toast. No, not the US government renaming French toast to freedom toast. This freedom toaster. Now this probably doesn't look that much like a toaster to you. And that's because it's not a toaster. It is much cooler and much, much more important. Our story begins all the way back in 2001 with a South African entrepreneur in his early 30s, Mark Shuttleworth, and he wanted to make a change in his country. So what he did is formed a non-profit called the Shuttleworth Foundation because naming things is hard, so just give it your own name. And the goal of the Shuttleworth Foundation is introducing educational FOSS projects and spreading FOSS adoption. Basically, it's all about getting people to use FOSS. Now, if you're in the Linux world, you may recognize the name Mark Shuttleworth. He's a very early developer on Debian, but much more notably, the current CEO and founder of Canonical, creators of Ubuntu, and he made the Shuttleworth Foundation about three years before forming Canonical. Also, he's technically an astronaut. He went to the International Space Station for almost 10 days. This man has lived a very interesting life. It sounds like a fun time. Anyway, back to the main story, 2001, three years before Canonical. Nowadays we think when I want to go and download a distro, let's say Ubuntu, let's say Fedora, let's say Arch Linux, we just go to the website and then download it. It's like maybe a couple hundred megs if we're talking about Arch, maybe a couple gigabytes for something like Ubuntu. And if I want to go and download a package, let's say, I don't know, a new kernel, let's say Pandoc, let's say literally anything. I just download it, I download however many dependencies it has, and maybe it takes me a few minutes, maybe like 30 minutes for something really big if I have a slow connection, but in many places of the world, even today, and especially back in 2001, that wasn't exactly the case. It wasn't really that simple. In many places of the world, you may be able to afford a computer. It's going to be possibly an older computer, but you can afford one, but you're in an area with very limited or no internet connection whatsoever. There's just no infrastructure there, or it's just way too expensive to justify. And Mark, being in South Africa, was in one of those countries. When he attended the University of Cape Town, he actually helped them to install one of their first residential internet connections. So he was basically there from the start of South Africa actually getting an internet infrastructure. So how do you spread Linux distros and FOSS to a lot of people who just don't have an internet connection? Well, the way you do that is with the Freedom Toaster. That black box you see on the front, what that is, is a bunch of CD burners. So the Freedom Toaster is a kiosk that we placed in some sort of publicly accessible area like a university, a library, a shopping center, and things like that. And you would bring your own CDs or in some implementations a DVD or other forms of optical media and then you would burn the free software onto it. And this would be in most cases distributions, but in some implementations could be used to download specific projects. Now the freedom part of the name is pretty self-explanatory. You're obtaining free software, freedom makes sense. The toaster is kind of a joke about it being a disk burner. It is toasting the data onto the disk. Now ignore the terrible quality, but this demonstrates how the freedom toaster works. Also I had to mute it because it uses very copyrighted music. Now this is also a slightly different model, this is just like a standalone PC, but this will be put into a freedom toaster cabinet. So in this case we are going to select the distro we want to grab, it's got this very nice looking clean interface, if you want to customize it you can go through a prompt there and choose different software and things like that, like you would have for a, you know, modern Ubuntu or pretty much any distro install. You can like pick and choose, I want the minimal, I want the full install, things like that. And in this case, I believe he's downloading a copy of Mandrake Linux. So he grabs the copy, and Mandrake being such a big distro, at least in the context of CDs, it's going to go across multiple CDs. So it'll actually use all three of the burners at the same time and burn it individually to those. 
Now, due to the Foundation's location in South Africa, most of the distributions of this machine were in South Africa. From my research, about 20 or so machines were actually deployed in places like Cape Town, Durban, East London, Port Elizabeth, Grahamstown, and a bunch of other places. But not just in South Africa. Not every single one of the machines was funded by the Shuttleworth Foundation. So as you might expect from a free software project trying to distribute free software, the code is available. And now the code is also available online. The plans for the machines weren't. Those were made individually by each of the people distributing them. But the machine is basically just like a computer with optical disc burners in a cabinet. It doesn't really matter what the cabinet is, as long as you have a screen that you can interact with, basically it's going to work. So there are also ones deployed in Toronto, Stockholm, and also possibly Indiana. There were talks of that being done back in 2008, I want to say, but I don't know if it ever actually got deployed. And a lot of these machines deployed in the more well-off countries like Canada and things like that, a lot of those were more educational projects from people actually involved in a university, like this one here. This one was done in 2012 and came out of the Seneca College Linux Club. It could also handle CDs and also DVDs. Now, as you might expect from being 2012, a lot of the comments aren't the most nice. A lot of them here are like, why would you do this? Like, you can just download the code and yeah if we're living in somewhere like Toronto for example you can probably download the code but that's not the point the point of this one is because they wanted to do it and in places where the connection isn't good it's something that you would actually need to use to get this code otherwise the only other way is basically getting CDs mailed to you and even though a kiosk isn't the most efficient way to do this, it's not like having a connection right in your house, it does lower that barrier to entry into the FOSS space from, you know, waiting multiple weeks for a CD to arrive. Now, from what I've been able to see, over time, the Shuttleworth Foundation was less and less involved in the Freedom Toaster project. But it didn't just fall to the wayside. So initially it was taken up independently by Zixiware Technologies with the Freedom Software user group of, and I'm not going to try to say this because it's in Hindi and it's a very long word, this here. Teruvanantapuram. That one. And like with the Shuttleworth Foundation over in South Africa, their plan was to do the exact same thing over in India. And from my research, they've only deployed one machine back in 2008. They may have deployed others, but there's not really any references to the Freedom Toaster online. Basically, what I've said is pretty much everything that we know online about the Freedom Toaster. So what's not really clear to me is the life they've actually had after the early 2000s and very early 2010s. So the last deployed machine I've been able to find is this one from 2012. There's no mention of it still being operational, but unless this Linux club has kept it going, I don't see any reason why it would be. And the last reference I've been able to see is from a set of slides put out by Zixiware in 2017. And then on one of these slides in here, there is a mention of the Freedom Toaster right here. Freedom campaigns and initiatives, including Freedom Walk and Freedom Toaster. So presumably that means they're still doing stuff with that, at least in 2017. Whether they're still doing stuff now, though, I don't know. So if you happen to be in somewhere like South Africa or India, and you know if any of these machines are still deployed... I would really love to know, and better yet, if they are deployed, whether they were still being updated with newer versions of distros, or if we're seeing things like Ubuntu 8.10. Also, I'll leave this full minute and a half video I showed a bit of before in the description down below. It basically goes over a lot of the same stuff that I said, but if you want to hear it from someone directly involved in the project, go and check that out for yourself. So, let me know your thoughts on the Freedom Toaster in the description down below. If you lived in an area that just didn't have a connection, didn't have a good connection in the early 2000s, or even now, 
Is this something you would have actually gone and used? Or were you perfectly happy using whatever it is you were using? Or maybe you were one of those people who was getting installer CDs from magazines and things like that. I would love to know. So if you liked this video, remember to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe to the pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robinson Plays. That's going to be it for me and I'm out.